everyone. Welcome to Frappe School. I am Lynette Sharon and this is the third chapter in our sales management course. And today we will be discussing sales order management. By the end of this chapter, you will know what are sales orders and what are their various types, how to create a sales order against quotations and against blanket orders. Our customers have placed an order via various channels. The sales team has been given the responsibility to manage and keep track of the orders placed by the customers in their allocated region. Recently, the number of orders placed has increased drastically because of the marketing activities and the availability of various channels to place orders. When one of the customers, Sarah, asked Jake about the status of her order delivery, he was not able to fetch the accurate details and share them with her. Well, this is where ERP Next helps us with the data that is required. Having a sales order which contains details about the orders placed along with the billing and shipping addresses and the contact person details that are fetched from the customer master makes it easy for the sales team to keep track of everything. It acts as a communication channel to various teams in the organization which intimates them to proceed with the next step. For example, it tells your organization's delivery and manufacturing teams what items are needed to be procured and to manufacture and when and where to ship the materials. Let's see how we can manage sales orders in ERP next. Star Electronics has received an order for 10 MacBook Airs from their customers. Let's first try creating a fresh sales order for the same. We can navigate to sales order from the awesome bar. Here, we can see all existing sales orders and create a new one by going to add sales order. Once we open a new sales order, we will first need to select the customer who has placed this order and the delivery date for this order. If the customer has shared a purchase order, we can add the purchase order details here. We can select the order type as either sales, maintenance or shopping cart. Depending on the type we select here, ERP Next allows us to create relevant transactions. The orders of type sales are selected for the items which require delivery of stock items to the customer. The orders of type maintenance are selected for the items which are mainly services and require defining a maintenance schedule. A real-life example is AC maintenance service, which requires quarterly servicing of an air conditioner. Order type is set to shopping cart when the order is generated via the shopping cart built using your ERP Next account or through the integration of third-party shopping carts like Shopify. In our scenario, since Star Electronics have to deliver stock items to the customer, we shall select the type Sales. Next, we can see that the default customer's address and contact details are fetched. We can edit it further if required. We'll then need to choose the applicable price list and the correct currency for this sales order. System, by default, fetches the standard selling price list. It fetches the currency based on the customer list. If not defined there, it fetches the company currency. If the same needs to be changed, that is possible on the fly in sales order. We can select the warehouse from which the order can be fulfilled in the set source warehouse field. Now, let's come to item selection in an order. Click on Add Row under Items. Select the item code and add the item specific details like item rate, quantity, etc. If we have specific item delivery dates, then we can add those to the items table. This date will override the general delivery date set above. We can also set a delivery date for an item 
after referring to the actual and projected quantity of an item. It's visible right in the warehouse field and helps you in committing the right delivery date to your customer. When it comes to fetching items in the transactions, we can also use the barcode field to fetch items quickly. If we have a lot of items in the sales order, we can also download the format and fill in the details in a spreadsheet and upload them into the sales order. We can also add items that represent a product bundle. A product bundle is essentially an item group with multiple items under it. Bundling items makes it easier to list items that are usually grouped together in sales transactions. If the items table in a sales order contains a product bundle, then all the items included in that product bundle will be listed in the packing list table. Moving forward, we can also select the appropriate tax category and sales tax template to calculate taxes automatically. Next, we can select the shipping rule to calculate the shipping cost. Star Electronics would like to offer additional discounts to our customers. Hence, we can define that discount as a percentage or a lump sum amount here in the additional discount section. Based on this discount, the grand total of this sales order will be calculated. In the next tab, we can select a payment terms template to add information in the sales order about the payment schedule for this order. Any further terms and conditions can be added in the terms and conditions section by selecting a template or typing them out. The last tab contains any more information that can be added. We have already learnt about how we can add sales team and sales partner details in the previous chapter. When we have filled in all the details in our sales order, we can save and submit the sales order. Once we have saved the sales order, we can take multiple actions linked to this sales order. The first action we will explore is the update items option. This allows us to change items in the sales order. For example, if we want to add a new item, we can add it and update the quantity, delivery date and rate as well. Next, using the status button, we can put the sales order on hold. This will restrict the user from creating a delivery note and sales invoice against it. But they can process the payments against it or close it if the order is cancelled. Moving on, we will explore the create button. This allows us to create various other transactions from this sales order. We can also create work orders, material requests or projects against a sales order. We can also make a payment entry directly from the sales order in case we are supposed to receive any advance payment from a customer based on the order. We've seen how to create a sales order from scratch. Let's see how to create a sales order from an existing quotation. We can open any existing valid quotation and go to the create option here at the top and select sales order. A new sales order will be created with reference to this quotation where the customer details and items ordered will be automatically added. We can also import details of a quotation by navigating to a new sales order screen and clicking on get items from and then on quotation in the drop down menu. The last thing we will see is how to create a sales order from a blanket order. A blanket order is an arrangement between a buyer and a supplier 
where the quantity of goods to be delivered, item price, and delivery dates are fixed as per agreed upon terms. Blanket orders are an easy way to order goods from a supplier. It's good for both the customer and the supplier since it has advantages for both parties. To create a new blanket order, we can navigate from the awesome bar. Here, we can create a new blanket order and select the order type as selling. Now, we link a customer, add the date range for this blanket order and select the items along with the pre-negotiated rates and quantity. Once we save and submit this blanket order, we can create a sales order by clicking on Create and then on Sales Order. Once we do, the customer details will be automatically added to the sales order and we can fill in the rest of the details and click on the Edit button in the item to see the blanket order reference for the item. Once everything is set as expected, we can save and submit the order. This brings us to the end of the third chapter of our sales management course. I hope this helped you understand how to create sales orders in ERP Next and use various features to create other transactions linked to it. You can read more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss loyalty program management. Thank you.